I tried VR racing with my friend and it sucked balls. It was a complete waste of money. It would have been better if I flushed my $15 down the toilet instead of paying them because at least I wouldn't have felt like throwing up. First of all, let's talk about the game itself. There are only two players playing and so there are only two cars with no computers. So if you pass one another and you don't see the other for a while, you're pretty much racing alone for the whole time. It's just you solo on the track, unless you somehow catch up to the other friend. That's what we ended up doing. We actually had to wait for another. I crashed at the beginning. So after racing for several laps, he had, my friend had to wait for me because otherwise it would have been just us racing solo the whole time. Speaking of laps, let's talk about the number of laps. It was way more than seven laps. I lost track and it didn't even show the number of laps on the screen. It was just so long and boring after the third lap. There's a reason why racing games have up to three laps. The first lap is fresh, the second lap you're getting the hang of it, and the third lap is the final stretch. There's something exciting about every single lap. But after three laps, it becomes a grind. You're just racing the same track over and over again. So it was really boring after three laps and we were just going through the motions to try and finish. Now let's talk about the sound. The sound was absolutely horrendous. It was non-existent. It wasn't headphones. There were these little speakers that were hanging over the ears, but it was so quiet. I couldn't really hear the engine. I couldn't really hear the tires that much. It was so quiet that it was just basically me hearing the sound of me steering the wheel in front of me. Sound is such an important part and the fact that they don't have high quality headphones to blast the sound in your ears is just completely lacking in that department. Next let's talk about the VR themselves. When you're looking through the VR, the image right in front of you is clear, but everything around the center is blurry. So if you look at the rear view mirror, it's actually blurry. You have to turn your whole head to the rear view mirror in order to see the rear view mirror clearly. Otherwise, if you just look with the side of your eye at a glance, it's blurry. So you can't see what's going on in the rear view mirror. And I didn't want to turn my head and look at the rear view mirror because I was getting motion sickness after the second lap. So I was starting to feel really queasy like I was going to throw up and I was just trying to look straight ahead without moving my head so that it would look like I'm just staring at a monitor, but it didn't really help. I was getting more and more sick as I was driving. So in a racing game, I guess it's cool that you can look to your left and to your right and to look at the rear view mirror, but that's about it. There's not much more to see. So most of the time you're staring at the front VR doesn't seem like it adds much to the racing at all. It's not like a shooting game where you can turn around and shoot in two directions at the same time, which is really cool and you can't do that in screen games. But in a racing game, it's pretty much the same as a screen racing game. So after we were finished with the VR, we were pretty sick. So we walked outside and tried to get some fresh air. We were pretty angry about how disappointing it was. And it is pretty pricey. It was $15 for a short session. So definitely disappointed. As I said, it sucked balls. So we're definitely not doing that one again, at least that particular one. If there's a way better version, then we might try that. But the one that we went to was a complete, total waste of money. So VR racing, eh, no go. Maybe some other VR games, but not racing. Definitely not a good combo.